see the world through other people's eyes. Now, empathy is a quality of character that can change the world. Unites people, armies, gold, flags, stories. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. Nothing can stop it. If you want to stand out from everybody else, you need to get into storytelling. Draw a different frame around the same set of circumstances and new pathways come into view. Welcome to Artifact Live with me, Scott MacArthur where we look at the art and science of story. We don't care who you are, whether you're a bricklayer, a professor, or a speaker. All we care about is you being a good storyteller. Thank God the drummers arrived. It's time to realise that facts tell, but it's stories that sell. Get me some nasty and get it now or someone's getting shot. And that's a niche of a niche of a niche of a niche of a niche. Thousand comments. Selling a hemorrhoid cream to someone who's got hemorrhoids. Got a whip. I was born into a deep contradiction. This stuff's magic. God, that's so clever. Good afternoon and welcome to Artifact Live with me, Scott MacArthur. And me, Paul Crick. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? Not bad. Uh, got a new haircut. I know, you're looking very sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we're just talking off air about how we react to different circumstances and things have picked up a little bit and I find myself smiling and, you know, mm. <laughs> and, uh, losing weight and not drinking so much and getting haircuts. <laughs> Good so, stuff. Yeah, so quite, quite, uh, quite good. And what about you? What have you been up to? Uh, good, good week. Usual round of uh, training uh, in the evenings. So um, yeah, aching a lot is what I've been up to. <laughs> Remind everybody what it is you do. So I do martial arts. So I do a particular yeah. one which is called Aikido, which is the non-violent one of the non-violent ones. Right. So um, yeah, so I do that four nights a week. I think, uh, one week we have a, I think there's a there's a show in the offing there because I actually have a friend who's a a teacher. Cool. Uh, I'd love to introduce you to him. So why don't we do it on here? Because and I'll just sit back and listen to you two talk because I know <laughs> nothing about it. But uh, yeah, uh, he's a great guy, Ian. The part that he's a Tory. So apart from that, he's he's he, he, uh, everyone's got. We'll a let flaw. it slide. Yeah, everyone's got a flaw, and that's his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah let's not go into mine. <laughs> so so last week. We we spoke about story selling, didn't we? We did. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was it was uh, interesting, and I've had some good feedback on 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 the socials. Uh, which nice. I think I think we need to do another one. I don't think we even did the S in the scratch of the surface of it. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know how you feel, mate, but I think we we need to come back to the selling discussion. It's I not where we we're do. going for the next few weeks, but I think it's going to come back. Yeah, I think I think it's a good theme. Yeah. I think people have got an appetite for learning about it. Yeah, and um, yeah. you know we can learn from other people as well. So people who come in on and and share their viewpoints and experiences of yeah, storytelling so. is always good. Yeah, and uh, you 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 mentioned in, in, in this week's theme we're we're talking about um, courage because it kind of came up during the discussion last week was something that you actually were talking about. And I thought, oh, I like the sound of that. I hadn't thought of that. Um, can you, what is it about courage that particularly interests you? What, what's the, what is it? What is it that, why should we be talking about it? Why should we care about it? Um, I think if I answer that this week, um, oh, I think it's, we've hung. we've hung. Oh no. It's a bit that's not very helpful. Okay, well, let's keep going. Paul will be back in a minute. We'll, we'll uh, I think it looks like he's had a wee problem with the Shouldn't line. Have. Um, so um, let's see if I can if I can still play on, on my side. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll show a little video here. And this is uh, by someone called uh, David 
to White, who both of us... Um, it's very odd how this isn't working. Let's just... Oh, we... Well, that was an interesting experience. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I that, don't that know what at all. Count as um, tur turbulence. Uh, uh, turbulence. <laughs> um, so I'm going to play a little video mm -hmm. um, that I'm not sure you've seen yet, but it's by somebody we both love, um, the poet David White. Now, this is very short, everybody. It's only 90 seconds. But it's David talking about courage because he's written in, in his book Consolations. He there's a whole chapter on the word courage, and this was how he started a conversation about having a co courageous conversation. So let's just listen to this, Paul, and and see what we think of it. I'll put us off rather than uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. mugs been on it. The uh, theme of the weekend really is how you keep the conversation alive, uh, the conversation of your your own life, your own inheritance in this life, and uh, how you stay in that meeting play, place between what you think is you and what you think is not you. And uh, to get out of the sense that we're some kind of piece of ammunition that we're supposed to aim at the target of life. Yeah? And uh, to create a more surprising, conversational, and hospitable identity that has all kinds of surprising and radical and sometimes dangerous edges. And my, uh, my measure of success this weekend is that you go out of this room a little more dangerous than when you came in tonight. Yeah. Uh, dangerous to yourself and to others. Yeah. And, uh, and a little more, uh, 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 a little more uh, generous, uh, in touch with a larger horizon, uh, but with your feet on uh, very determinedly on the ground. But uh, in my understanding, the first step in, ta in having a real conversation is simply to stop having the one you're having now. Uh, by definition, the courageous conversation is the conversation you're not having now. And uh, also by definition, the courageous conversation is the one you don't want to have. <clears throat> and, um, and the courageous conversation is one which you hope isn't true, that there's another one you can have in its stead. And it's very similar in a sense to our approach to life. I do think that one of the reasons we find it so difficult to have courageous conversations is that human beings can't quite believe what they're involved with in the average life and the depth and amount of loss that a human being must go through. Everyone in this room will say goodbye to everyone they know or they will be said goodbye to and uh, life involves <clears throat> taking on names and taking on stories and then having to give them away and taking on uh, wonderful material things and making a house for them and then moving out of the house and moving on. And uh, so uh, uh, one half of life is the ability and discipline of giving away. Uh, quite often things that you thought were yours forever and giving away uh, um, what is now out of season and what is about to uh, to come into season. Well, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> as always, I, I always have to think about what David says. <laughs> I don't know how you react to that. Um, I, I think it's true. It, I, what it sparked in me was um, something I heard yesterday, which is um, this idea of um, so. So the idea is courage is the opposite of fear. Um, courage is the opposite of fear. Is is one way of framing it. It's not the only way. Yeah. Um, but I but I think the courageous conversation is 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 really important and is absolutely right. Um, in in that we need a different conversation now um with all that's kicking off around us with with all the various um crises um 
that are that are happening at a community level, at a regional level, national and international level. Um, mm. There needs to be that different conversation. Um, there's that that famous famous meeting between uh, Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev in in, in Iceland, as uh, where Gorbachev uh, turned up and said, "I'm here to um, deny you an enemy." Uh, which you know that if you think about the courage it would take to do that on a world stage with the the world's media attention and other political entities viewing on that just just takes an enormous amount of courage to, to to say that but in doing so paved the way for what was then one of the one of the primary uh, treaties on uh, nuclear arms and it's gorgeous isn't it i mean it's uh, an, an absolutely beautiful it's breathtaking. Way to... it, it, it really is breathtaking and and, and it's, yeah. it's thinking about um so where 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 do we have that conversation where we can take the Gorbachev chair and what is it we need to say in the room and who do we need to say it to? Yes. To 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 do that rather than uh what um Dr. Bob Anderson talks about, which is you know, playing not to lose. Yes. You know, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my posture, I'm gonna I'm gonna save face. Yes. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say the things that keep me safe. So they don't have to change, um, and I don't lose anything. I think there's I think, a, I'm yeah. sorry. Go there's a lot to unpack there from what you've added to that. I mean, I, I think the the, the 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 statement he made about be a little more dangerous mm. um, and courageous. He added on to that, but um, I I like that. I mean, that I think. I mean, you and I were playing our own definition, weren't we? And, and I mean, there's there's a there's a slide here. We've we've taken it from uh, I've mentioned on the show before Maria Popova, who mm -hmm. had a website called um, Brain Pickings, and she's recently rebranded it uh, the Marginalian. And this is a quote that's kind of riffing off of Susan Sontag, who I've also talked about before. Courage comes in many guises: the courage to despair, necessarily the the, the necessity necessarily for a, a for being an artist the courage to be vulnerable the surest yet most difficult path to self-transcendence courage at, at knife point where our humanity is revealed and the courage to resist to resist cynicism god i'm getting my tongue and my tongue and my teeth all mixed up today oh, yeah. uh, and, and, but the bit that we we've kind of added to that is and the courage to listen to and share your own story and i think that that's kind of what you said last week, and it really resonated with me, you know, courage, courage, courage. And I've been thinking about it all week. Um, and I think the two things together, you know, about the, the, the Gorbachev story, which I, I hadn't heard that, believe it or not. That's the first time I've heard that. Um, wow. You know, <laughs> what, what, what do you think that means then? What, what does it mean for, if you're sitting at work right now, what does having a courageous conversation mean um, where does it start? Um, it's a bit like a Mexican standoff. Huh. Yes. It, it's it, it's you, you know when you've had a, had a had a bit of an argument with your partner and you sort of disappear to other ends of the house and yeah. you, you heads in other stuff. Someone's got to go first in yeah. in in the process of saying i was wrong or i'm sorry or preferably both um and that that in it's that in itself is a small piece of courage it's it's a willingness to say what what am i no longer willing to tolerate you know what what we what we tolerate is the standard we accept and i think it's a standard we accept i like that yeah. So if you walk past, so we, we a stupid thing, uh, but on the basis of that th that saying, you know, if, if we're walking around the village, walking the dogs, and we see someone's chuck something on the floor, a piece of rubbish, we'll pick it up. Yeah. Because we're not willing to tolerate the fact that someone's chucked some garbage onto the pavement it makes the village look crap. Not only that, yeah. you know, from a climate change point of view, it's one little thing we can do. Yes, to make a difference, and it's so it's it's going first, and it's you know I'm not prepared to accept that standard. So, yeah, mm -hmm. the challenge to the audience that would be, what is he no longer willing to tolerate? And and I think there's a lot of that going on with the great great resignation. You know, people are saying, yeah, hang on a minute, uh, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm 
I suddenly realized what I was doing and I was perhaps a, perhaps a little on autopilot. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to make, I'm now going to make some adjustments and I'm actually going to have a conversation in, 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 in an adult to adult way that says, look, you know, can we just take a step back here? You know, I'd like yes. to share my viewpoint. What do you think? Well, I think that I'll build on that because I think the, I mean, yes, just yesterday I was talking to one of my uh, clients who I'm, I'm speaking to on Thursday and I said to her, you know, where are you with the, the implications of, you know, the, the sort of post COVID um, impact on how we go to work. And she said, well, we're struggling with it. You know, there are, there are ways we can go. There are, there are different people with different perspectives. And I said to her, I said, when was it ever not like that? But I think what's happening is, as you say, people are expressing themselves. So equally, yesterday I saw someone posting, you know, has anyone ever thought about how ridiculous commuting is? You know, I spend three, day, three hours every day on a tube to get to an office uh, and for working seven hours. So I'm actually spending 10 hours a day, but only three of them are, are productive because you can't work on the tube, can you? I mean, you can't even think on the tube, never mind, you know, get your laptop out. And we all knew that was the case, didn't we? Mm. But we weren't brave enough, you know, to to actually voice it. And I think, I mean, COVID's been horrific, but mm. it has in some way for some people, and I do think we over-egg it sometimes, but for some people, um, they're willing to say what they actually think. And they weren't before. You yeah, know? well, it's like, it's, it's like fire isn't particularly present. In in certain circumstances, it is because it create it create paves the way for new growth and regeneration. Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely, um, absolutely. And, you know, I I know that we we can continue to read of horrific experiences and that people have been through. So it's it's too easy to generalize. Yes, but there I, is I, a there is a there is a go first. There is a yeah, a wake up and smell the coffee. Mm. moment that we seem to have been able to become aware of yes the, the other thing that i mean there is there is a, 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 a trying to be balanced on this because my, my reaction is well yeah you know we, we should be being more you know hybrid working and people-centric I and mean, i've been talking about this for bloody years <laughs> you know it's not none of that's new but on the other hand there is a psychological, I mean, it's called the availability heuristic, where people mm. tend to remember the context they are currently in without going back to the the, the bigger experience, you know, the mm. more, uh, you know, the, there's, there's all sorts of scientific jargon around this, but, you know, only reacting to the current dialogue is probably not as positive as it could be you know i think you need to be because do you remember that there was all that abuse um what's his name the, the apprentice guy got for saying oh, you know, people, lord sugar lord sugar and they're all they, he got a lot of abuse and i have to say some of that was well deserved mm. but i worked in employee relations for a long time and you do develop a cynicism in that role where you know i never sacked a good employee and people forget that, that there are employees who don't want to be there, who will abuse the system, who, but then obviously the counter argument to that is, well, that's the, that's the thin end of the wedge. You know, that's not the thin end of the wedge. That's just a, that's not the majority, I hope. So, you know, I would stand up a little bit for sugar. I don't agree with him, but I would stand up for some of his argument. I just think it was very clumsy. Don't um, you find that people don't have the conversation? There's no conversation in the interview that says, Hang on, I'm an, I'm auditioning you as much as you're auditioning me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely um, right, and, absolutely. And, yeah, it's it's usually, usually a values conflict that that causes the the, the cracks to appear uh, yes. and a wedge to be driven. So, yes, are we not in a place where employers should should to, and 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 people interviewing for jobs or employees should have the conversation that says, actually, this isn't for me anymore. Yeah. And then employers should be saying, oh, right, okay, uh, how can we help you get to where you want to be? And then people saying, okay, how do we backfill that role and yes. have a different conversation that's a different dynamic yes. rather than the dancing around the handbags conversation yeah. of, uh, well, are you leaving, aren't you leaving, what's going on, or, well, I can't tell you, you know, yeah. and, and all, all this, all, what I, what, what um, Dr. Bob Anderson at Leadership Circle calls playing not to lose. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think there though, 
it's a classic example of a false binary. You know, mm. I think I think people are. I mean, I, I, one of my one of my favorite poets is Charles Burkowski, and he he says at one point, um, "Isolation is a gift." Now that's true for some people. It's true mm. for some of the time, but isolation will always can also kill you. Yes, it can. You know, so I think I think there needs to be a. And this is why this is quite good because this is a courageous conversation because th th there are not enough out there. I mean, I just, I just, I was reading the comments on that on that uh, Egypt's um, statement. So that's that's showing my bias on that individuals that very successful individuals <laughs> statement, yeah. and they're all going, he's a he's a silly old man. They're committing a a mistake there because they're assuming that because he's older that he's a silly, and I, and that's not true. Well, it's too you know, easy to blow someone else's yeah. candle out, isn't it? And yeah. It, uh, uh, you know, as, as, as the quote quote says, you know, it's the ability not not to be cynical, and it's the ability to take a different a different stance that says, well, people aren't their behaviour, or what what is it that's causing people to to do that? You know, the, it, it's the courage to take the time, yeah. you know, because we're all we're all, all, all been in this hustle culture to take <laughs> the time. And step back and say, I, I actually want to take the opportunity to think about stuff, yeah. so so that I'm not shortcutting and jumping to the lowest common denominator, common mm. denominator of groupthink. Yes, and I think that. I mean, I was I ran an event um, late last week for a small group of chief executives, mm -hmm. and one of them said at the end. The, the the main thing today, Scott, and I thought it was quite nice and quite sophisticated feedback. He said, the main thing for me today is you've made me aware of things I had no idea about. You know, that awareness is the first step. And I was like, you know, thank you very much. Um, because, and I think it's almost like our role on this show to, 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 to raise awareness, not in a pontification way or a smart ass way but in a in a way that that people would listen to us or watch us and go god you know i'd never heard that quote that paul mentioned and that actually is generative that makes me think about you know how i'm how i work with my colleagues and why don't i challenge my boss about how i feel about you know commuting for two hours each way every day in a in a car maybe there's a different way and i mean that to me and and I mean I and I did respond to the Lord Sugar thing, and I did say, you know, I never get any abuse. I don't even get any. Nobody even trolled me, mate. But I did say, I'll look at calm down. <laughs> yeah, I'll sort some out for you. Don't worry. I'll look, I, okay, I'll look forward to it, mate. But <laughs> I said to I said on on the LinkedIn thing, I said, look, everybody, you're 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 committing the same crime as him. Yes. You know because you're being just as it's a false binary. You're just being as polarized as him. And the fact is, some people are lazy bastards who won't do any work at home. And other people will grasp the opportunity and flourish. Yes, it's a mixture. We're too complicated for all these false binaries. It does. You probably tell me my levels of hormones are going up because I get I get quite annoyed about it because it's so bloody obvious. You know, we are complex, and it's why I get cross about a lot of the gurus, the same aesthetics of this world, because they they tend to try and simplify us all down to these little simple equations. Well, it just isn't like that. I, um, I I agree, and I get frustrated by this. This oh, you must you you must simplify stuff, oh. and and there are contexts where that, that is appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just I'm just revisiting the West Wing again, and I am oh, yeah. loving. It's amazing the complexity of the storytelling and the character and the dialogue, yeah, and the ideas you know that are making me think about. Yeah, right. There was there was an episode called Shibboleth, and I enjoyed the episode. But what the hell is a Shibboleth? So then you start to do a uh, a deep dive into into the background to all that, and you go, "Wow, why did I? Why at that time did I not know that? And why is it now that that it's it's piqued my curiosity enough?" And I think yeah. Sir Ken Robinson nails it in his yeah. you know, TED talk. You know, it's it's educated out of us because what's dangerous. What's dangerous about courage is 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 you know the willingness to think for ourselves, the willingness to study what matters to us, yeah, and then to put that to use. And you know the last thing, the last thing the social contract was negotiated for was a was a workforce that 
stood on its own two feet and good God, they think for themselves. How dangerous, <laughs> how, how dangerous can that be? <laughs> when what we really want is compliant, compliant, yeah. good, obedient workers to do, yeah, absolutely. to be the cog in the machinery. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's all gone, thankfully. Or is well, going. It, it hasn't, it hasn't though, hasn't it? Because yeah, I, mean, I mean, collective bargaining is still the foundation on which many of our organizations and institutions are still built. And it, and it, I mean, there is a parallel track, isn't there? Because technology means that, I mean, I, I, one of my, I talk about this in one of my keynotes, you know, all, all the products outside our work are being individualized. But inside work, we're still doing collective bargaining. Yes. That ain't going to continue. I mean, it, that's not been a futurist. That's just bloody common sense. No, you know? I, I, I know. And, and with open source, you, know, yeah. you, you can be quite prolific on your own yeah. with that. Sort of having to count out to to a particular party line. Yes, and I mean it's the. I mean we're probably going off track, but we can come back. But I I actually can quite comfortably argue that we are now seeing the beginning of the end of the organisation. As we, know I saw it. someone else comment on that. Um, yeah, they were saying that the 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 end of the organisation is is nigh, and, yeah. and I think in its current form, certainly the large scale organisation. Yeah. Because scale is the enemy. So, that's right. um, but to but to bring it back to, to yeah. courage and, and sort of going first, because uh, there's a nice Billy Graham quote I found, which um, which is a while ago actually, which says, "Courage is contagious. When a brave man or woman takes a stand, the spines of others are often stiffened." Nice. Uh, and that's it. And you know, once one goes, uh, then people tend to get behind that person and say, yeah, I feel that way too, or I feel yeah. similar. You know, here's my, yeah. here's my nuances around that idea, and I want, I want to express that. And I think, I think what that does is it restores creativity and it res restore, restores our diversity. You know, we become naturally diverse and inclusive um, yeah. through that, um, which leads me to think about, well, what is it that keeps that in place and stops us from doing that and, and or what how do we overcome that and I, I don't have the answers yet but, um well ted I might be might be able to help with that a little bit because one of the i've mentioned him to you before my mentor jim douglas hi jim mm -hmm. i know you watch um he always said i mean i remember we worked, we worked in a fish factory together first time i met him he was my man manufacturing director in a fish factory in Fraserburgh in the north of Scotland. So it was a really dirty job, quite literally. And what he did, he he, he came in as a firefighter because the place was falling apart. Uh, Fisher Foods was on its knees, mm -hmm. two billion pound in debt. You know, we were in deep trouble. And he came in and he completely transformed the place, Paul, because what he did, he just said, and this is all he did. I mean, it, there was more than this, but, you know, if I had to think back in it, there's all these lessons I got from him there. And the first thing he did was he said, right, I know nothing about fish factories. I mean, he's a Rolls Royce engineer. <laughs> he said, so what we'll do in the management meetings, we used to have the, you know, that uh, visible factory model where you all get together in the morning and you talk about what you're going to do. He said, every morning, seven o'clock, uh, uh, you know, morning prayers, we used to call it. And I know other companies call the same thing. He says, I'm not going to say anything until the end. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jim would just stand there and he's a big honey monster friendly character, but don't cross him, you know, but he would just stand there. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> uh, he'd just stand there and he'd listen. And, and for the first few weeks, it was a bit of a rabble. You know, it, it, it was like there was a guy, one guy who was a disruptive and not in a good way. He was a bit of a prick. Mm. Um and he would say stuff, and it was like, oh, no, no, he, 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 don't we want him not to talk? But he was leading them down a very disruptive route that was very damaging. But gradually, the group started to self um, manage. So that's the right word self, whatever it was doing. And then it got to the point where it really began to work, you know, and it got to the point where all Jim was saying at the end of the meetings was, great, let's do it. You know, he, he, that was it. I mean, Jim's job was just to say, yeah, well done, guys. Because he, he gave them permission by saying, I know nothing about fish factories. Then he just shut up, Paul. And how brave is that? In certain circumstances, very, very brave. Yeah. Um, but the, the, you know, it, it, it acknowledges two truths, um, which is one, we're all winging it. 
I don't care who you are, what you do, there is a large component of what you do that's winging it, um, which 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 I think is 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 important, and 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 also that you know that we have no control really. We, the control over certain things is just an illusion. Yes, and 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 I think it's I. What excites me is the courage to entertain those kinds of ideas and say, okay, yeah. if I entertain that. How does that change the quality of our thinking? So, you know, the much misquoted Einstein quote of, I think I mentioned it last week, you know, the thinking that got us here isn't the thinking that's going to get us out of here. Yes. So, and I paraphrase very, very broadly, <laughs> a misquote. Um, so if that's the case, what what is different? What, what does need to be different? Um, I'm a big fan of, uh, I've just come across Nassim Harriman. Uh, I don't oh, know yeah. if you're a fan, uh-huh, fan or yeah. not, but. Yeah, we as, and he ha, he had me when he said we all imagine that space is empty. <laughs> Excellent. And he said, "What if it's full?" Yeah. And I just went, "Oh, mind blown!" Yeah. Boom. And you start, and and it's just this willingness to go, to go left when everyone else will go right, even yes. if you're wrong. Yes. I mean, I think the the other thing that's lovely. The other thing that I get stuck on, if I'm honest. I see a lot of people wanting to go left or right, depending on where you start, or down the middle even, you know, the third way, if you like. But mm. um, they then pick up another badge. Like, I hear people talking about, oh, it's all the patriarchy, or it's all the, it's all this, or it's the Illuminati, or it's the it's the city, or it's, you know, it's, it's the pol- politician. And they always seem to be, giving it a label, you know, a blaming something for the problem. And yet I've never, I've never met anybody. Well, no, that's not true. I've only ever met one person who was, was like that, who was so power driven. I mean, he was an absolute twit of a man. I mean, in fact, he wasn't, he was a very clever man, but he, mm. but he had a superiority complex. So he just believed everyone else was an idiot. You know, he used to tell me I'm smarter than the average bear, so I'm going to tell everybody what to do. Well, you can guess what happened to him, can't you? Hmm. You know, never ends well for those guys. Um, but I, I worry about people jumping to these conclusions. It's, it's the patriarchy. It's the matriarchy. Whatever hierarchy it is, you know, uh, rather than because I, I think, and it might have been missed on that on that slide that we pulled together from from Marginalian. The courage to listen to and share your own story, your own story. I don't know if people are often brave enough. Maybe I'm trying to answer my own insecurities here. Their own story, you know, they're not answering their own questions. I don't say I'm not saying you should end at your own questions, but but just you because your own opinion is very often, if not always, flawed. But I think you need to start somewhere, and often starting with your own beliefs or your own resistance or your own lack of courage or your own over bravery because you can be over brave and say too much i've done that um so it's a slightly rambling statement but I, hopefully you get what i'm getting at yeah the assumption is that the problem's out there yeah and yet yeah. we are we, uh, mayor culpa we are complicit yeah the longer the problem continues we are part of the problem yeah yeah and and the extent to we which we can you know take take the parliamentary process in the uk <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Every everyone will, whatever their political colour, will moan about the state of politics and 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 yes. they don't achieve stuff and this that, and that which isn't true. But you have to look systemically and say, how does the system work? Yeah. You know, what Desmond Tutu talks about at some point when if people keep falling in the river, you have, you have to go upstream to figure out who's pushing them in. Yeah. Or yeah. what's pushing them in. And you have to look systemically and say, well, you have to look at how the how laws are made, how voting works, and you have to fix that first. Yes. Before, you know, irrespective of who, which colour has the majority or whether there's absolutely. a coalition. Yes, and, absolutely. And, and that then means, so are you going to get off your backside and go and stand somewhere and, and talk about this and find the others who talk about this mm-hmm. and, and create a groundswell of support if it's important enough to change? That's one side of it. The other side is, you know, there's this myth that we as people fear change. You know, 
oh, we don't like change. We don't like change. We're very, very scared of change. Yeah. Actually, that's not true. Not at all. Uh, I we are, <laughs> is it? Well, yeah. <laughs> but we're wired for curiosity. We're, yeah. we're wired to learn and explore, and, and that's what we do. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, what is it we're afraid of? And someone someone dropped a penny in the slot for me the other night, and they said, "What we're afraid of is loss." Yeah. What are we gonna? What's what's the consequences? You know, if you did a cost benefit mm-hmm. analysis, it was like all these yeah. benefits. Yeah, but what's the cost? And the yeah. cost comes down to how does our how does our identity change? Yes. If we're willing to do that, and very often. In, in a workplace situation or even even in a, a relationship situation where we're relating with one or more people we have a we have an identity in that we have a network of relationships and we have habits of behavior that we're very comfortable with and anything that threatens our identity I mean look at any look at any elite athlete that's gone from elite being an elite athlete to retiring you know a lot of them go through that process of oh yeah tough holy crap I didn't think about how yeah. my entity identity was going to change, how, and I want that back, but I can't have it back because yes. I know Domini is against me. Yeah, the system works in a certain way. So I, there's a lot there. I kind of rumbled a bit, but no, no, that's all right. Um, I tell you, I, I, I had a when I, I mean I don't do it very often these days, but on and off over the years, I've done some executive coaching, mm-hmm. and. One of the things I, I'm not really I'm not really a co- I'm more a mentor coach I think I'm not I'm not uh, traditionally a coach I guess but the first thing I ask them and it, and it's only first because I put it first it's not there I don't think it's there for any intellectual reason but I ask them about their relationship with money and the eyes go up they go left and right they go what's he talking about oh fuck no one's ever asked me about that before Mm. and often we end up honestly having six or seven sessions just about the relationship with money Mm -hmm. because and i know it's not the only one but it's one of these drivers it's one of these things in our lives um one of one of my main one of my mentees said to me very recently they said to me that money was more important to them than their family. Right. Now okay. that's very intimate. And of course, I'm not going to say who said it because it was very so. intimate and I had permission to ask the question and, and, and permission to share the experience, but certainly don't, not naming any names. But I thought, right now that was really brave. Now that I, I really admired that person for saying that, but of course that's led to a whole range of other conversations, you know, and I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know where they're going to lead me. I don't know where, you know, my, my main mentee is going to take that, but bloody hell, it's strong and powerful and really brave. Um, these are the big questions. You don't, you don't get asked that question on an MBA. No, we don't teach power and politics. No. On leadership courses. Either. No, no. And yet it's there. Or storing or storytelling, incidentally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's becoming more common. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think there are certain things that, that that's really interesting. Of course, my follow up question is: Okay, so what is it that money gives you? Yeah, of course. Uh, and that's where the conversation is. Th- so that'll prove to be interesting. Yes. And I shall report back if I can. But uh, it, it's I I always I always like that sort of answer though because you you, you get. I don't know what you feel about this, but I, I mean, I, I talked about it this week as well when I was working. I, I, I talked about my Johnny Cash experience, you know, where I was working at Peterhead Prison for whatever reason, and I, I did a values workshop with the prisoners. Have I told you this story? No, no, tell me more. It was hilarious. Um, so I ended up in front of 300 murderers and rapists because Peterhead Prison is where all the really bad guys go in Scotland, and a lot okay. of the English bad, bad guys go there as well. It's a really, really tough prison. And I walked in, and I was absolutely bricking it. I, <laughs> uh, I was, I think, I was twenty-eight at the time, so I wasn't even that experienced. And I walked in, and I and and I'm on a stage in front of these, you know, uh, people all set up at eight a table, and I I went through this um, values conversation with them, and bloody hell, guess what they come up with? 
Go on. I have no idea. Yeah, you do. Teamwork. Yeah. Honesty. Communications. Really? Right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, bugger me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what's what's going on here? Um, yeah. And I became very, very uh, cynical about values at that point because I thought, wait a minute, if these multi, you know, serial killers and rapists have the same values as my company or as all my friends, eh, what's going on here? You know, and it set me off. You know, I was, I was very unsure and I still am. I'm not cynical anymore, but I, it made me really think. Uh, and they've no reason to lie. You know, they're not going to sit there and lie, are they? You know, well, you wouldn't expect them to in a group. There's a great uh, documentary. I wonder if you've seen yeah. it. It's, uh, it's called The Work. Have you seen The Work? I have seen The Work. Yeah, I have seen The Work. Where they, where they go into Folsom Prison. Unbelievable. Uh, it's the most electric piece of television I've ever witnessed. Well, gonna, do you know how you watch The West Wing again? I'm going to watch The Work again because it's that long since I've seen it. Yeah, uh, it is available. it's still available on YouTube. Uh, and it's it's it, to yeah. my mind it's the most electric thing and, and what it shows is um that we're all all the same underneath yeah well that was kind of the point i was making but less yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i did i did a i did a thing back in 2007 called the mankind project which is right. a global organization they do a thing called the new new warrior adventure and um, yeah oh yeah some some, yeah. some 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 people are cynical about it some people aren't and, and having Having been through that experience, I can promise you that all underneath, um, you know, once you strip all the masks and stuff away, you know, it's it's just absolutely beautiful to watch. Um, and, and that's, you know, we wear this defense and we think, you know, we think it's like armor and that's what's brave. You know, we've put our armor on and we walk through the front door of the office or the, the office building and, and, and now we're ready to defend. And yet, when you take all that off and you stand in the truth of, and the, you know, or you know, stand in the fire, as a Ryan Mountain Dream would 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 would, would say, yeah, then there's nothing. There's nowhere else to go. You know, you are you are as strong as you'll ever be. Yes, and it's to the point of being invincible. That's interesting. Right, I think we're gonna have to dwell on that. <laughs> okay. Let's dwell um, away. No, no, I like. I just, I, well, one of the other things I've learned is to stop bullshitting when I don't know where I'm going. You know, uh, some some people don't think I'm very successful at it, <laughs> but um, the 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 work is certainly. Oh, I had forgotten about that. You know, um, and I, I think I'll go back and revisit that and do some work on it because th- this is a rich seam this courage piece. It's a bit like um, storytelling generally. Oh, and Andy's just reminding us that P- Peterhead Prison is now a family fun destination. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I shall put that on my list and, uh, of places yeah. to visit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can go and see where the murderers and rapists used to be and where yeah. story, Scott's stories used to take place. But um, anyway, so that, I hope folks have enjoyed that. God, we've done 45 minutes and well, in 45 minutes, but it went so quickly, Paul. Um, we're going to take it in a different direction next week, aren't we? Well, it's linked, isn't it? But tell people where we're going next week. Who, who have we got on next week? So next week is um, a really good friend of mine, uh, a lady by the name of Jennifer Hamady. Uh, you can find her at uh, finding, findingyourvoice.com. Jennifer's is a licensed therapist uh, in, in the US, uh, but don't let that put you off. <laughs> um, uh, because she also uh, she started her career in music performance, um, and if you think that sounds dull, then read her roster of who she's uh, been supporting. Uh, I won't spoil the surprise for everyone, no. but you'll be pleasantly surprised. Amazing. But she takes what's called a trauma informed approach to helping people find their voice, so that they can express themselves either through um, singing uh, or through public speaking or uh, literally storytelling, and um, she that perspective is an unusual perspective um, and, and way of, of of teaching and thinking about storytelling and what what prevents that. And she's just 
I've known her now for 10 years and I phoned her up out of the blue. I was doing a, I was hosting a podcast for um, the modern vocalist. Uh, and yeah, just cause I, I can't remember why I said yes, but I did. And I got a list of people to contact and I thought, right, I'll get in touch. And she just said, yes. I was like, Oh, wow. Fine. And, and she says she'll, you know, she believes in having the courage to step out, suck the juice out of life. And, you know, when we talk about enjoy, you know, the focus is on the joy. So I think, I think she's going to be a wonderful guest um, to listen to. She's a published author. She's just win it, working on her fourth book, I think. Right. Um, she's a vocal coach. Uh, so she's behind um, some of the voices on America's Got Talent, uh, some of the major artists in the world of country. Um, so she's just a phenomenal all-round human being. And I'm very proud that I'm able to call her one of my friends. And that she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she might again. Might not be as much of a friend as you'd thought. Um, yes, yeah, okay. That's terrific. But yeah, and maybe we'll lovely. get some crossover from our other work with the the music in the music world. But she'll so, she'll she'll talk about um, you know particularly um, nerves. You know when you're performing yeah. on stage, and you know if you're a public speaker yeah. or you're a storyteller, giving pitches yeah. and that sort of thing. Then I think you'll find it useful to come and listen to some of her. Uh, some of her stories and some and, and, and a ton of wisdom fantastic well thanks for organizing that i do appreciate you're it. welcome so i hope um people enjoyed that i i loved that i mean i i think the the susan sontag thing about courage and fear the relationship they are out there of and the the the, the complexity of just being a human being i think maybe complexity is a subject we could come back to actually paul i think we have to think about that because I mean, I think the well, the, my basic axiom is: if someone tells a story based on complexity, it's a good story. Mm -hmm. If they tell it based on nothing, it's not such a good story. You know, it's, I mean, that's a very simple way. Yeah, of I'd love, to, I'd love to see if we can get hold of Nora Bates and uh, yeah. to, to come and talk about that. Yeah. See if she'd uh, come and be a guest because she's that's a jolly good idea. She's, okay. she's great, and her and David Snowden. Um, oh, David's amazing. Uh, to um, to to probably the finest minds we've got right now. Yeah. I mean, he's quite Europe. he's get, he's getting a bit more contentious in his old age as well. He is. He's I, a bit I, grumpy at times, like... <laughs> but that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's like thirty five that. years, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Scott MacArthur, and thank you very much for tuning in to Artifact Live. And I'm Paul Craig. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye bye.